side of this wall cloud because from our vantage point here, we're still several miles away. It does look like, I mean, it's hard for me to tell visually exactly what's going on here, but I can, from my naked eyes, I can detect a little bit of rotation within this. Is there anything that you can see on radar that would indicate that we potentially have any type of rotation uh, combined with this visual? Yeah, Mike is probably looking at this little formation that's off here to the left, and that's certainly a possibility. Uh, let's take a look at the at our radar, our 3D radar now, and uh, and 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 see what that uh, takes a look at. So certainly a possibility here. This could be a tornado that's beginning to form uh, off uh, to the uh, to the left. We could have something come down also right out of the wall cloud. Uh, do we have our uh, 3D radar available? Well, certainly, Matt, Mike, uh, we're keeping an eye on, on that lobe off to the left of the wall cloud as well as underneath the wall cloud. Dr. Forbes, could we be potentially looking at, at a wedge tornado developing here off to the left? Because it's hard. I mean, it doesn't have that classic cone shape to it right now, but it definitely looks like there's now a different appendage to the main section of the lowering wall cloud. Yeah, certainly, and, and it does appear that there's trying to be some kind of a little, uh, potentially a little funnel protruding out of that. Of course, sometimes these are uh, uh, red herrings, that they're just little elements. I think mostly uh, uh, what we're seeing here is elements of ascent, but certainly that's a very active area. Uh, the rain-cooled air is wrapping around behind the storm and then circulating forward, and I think this uh, low-hanging is right on the edge of that. So there's ascent taking place there. There's certainly some rotation, and it's not out of the question a tornado could form there or over closer to the uh, the edge of this uh, wall cloud. I'd still be on the lookout for one of these uh, little protuberances coming right down. Uh, now there's something hanging a little bit lower down out of this near the center of that wall cloud. So that's certainly a good candidate as well. Dr. Forbes, when I, when I um, listen to the scanner, I hear Dr. Worm saying this is what they've been looking for. This one is getting even more intense. Probes have been deployed, stick nets have been deployed, and when the, when the radars need to scan on this, what is the advantage to them being screened left on this? So if you're looking at your TV right now, it'd be off to your left. What is the advantage to the radars being on the south and southeastern side of this particular storm? Well, one th the thing you want to have uh, not happen is to get the radars in the hail. And so with the storm moving east, you want to keep the radars uh, to the south. Uh, one of them a little bit to the southwest, one to the southeast. That gives you two different vantage points. The individual single Doppler radar can only measure the flow directly toward and away from the radar. And so by having two of them spaced apart, you can get the full three-dimensional uh, measurement of the wind instead of just the in and out component. And they'll, they'll merge those together with the computer analyses that they have. Uh, here you're seeing a little bit more change of structure now to that low hanging portion. It's looking like it's turning like this. Another little uh, spot trying to come down. Often it's these areas right at the edges of the rain shafts where tornadoes will come down. So I'm still continuing to monitor two areas here underneath Mike's cloud for that possibility of a tornado. All right, let's, let's show everyone at home what exactly Vortex 2 will be doing on this particular storm that has a tornado warning here in Goshen County, Wyoming. If you look at the shaded area in yellow on this graphic, that is the supercell itself. And where you see that little fish hook at the bottom of your screen there, that's where you'll end up seeing the tornado. So if you look at the deployment here, as Dr. Forbes was mentioning, a lot of the radars are going to be on generally the eastern or the southern side of it to try to avoid any precipitation because if they're trying to measure velocities, the last thing they want to do is scan into any rain or scan into any hail. If you also look at what looks to be like camera tripods, those are stick nets and they want to deploy throughout the system and especially deploy in front of it and let it come towards them. So if the storm motion here is, oh, now we, okay, take a look here. Look at what we've got now. Now it looks like we've got a lowering funnel right now. Uh, check this out, Dr. Forbes. This is coming right down in the middle of the wall cloud. It's trying looks to go. like we've got a funnel at least developing potentially a tornado now. Yes, there. indeed, right there, just as I was saying, just to the edge of where the rain is, that's where the tornadoes like to form in this kind of a supercell thunderstorm. That's uh, 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 an interface between the updraft and the downdraft. Can so that's been the area that? where I've been watching for the rotation to develop. Uh, and uh, it's certainly trying to do Dr. it. Dr. Forbes, time. from my vantage point here, Dr. Forbes, there's obvious rotation there. Yeah, there's this... obvious rotation from our distance here a couple of miles away. Yeah, and we can see it in your video too, Mike. It's obviously rotating rather strongly counterclockwise here. So 
uh, perhaps this right edge of the of that rotating portion, perhaps the left edge, perhaps the whole portion of that will turn into one wedge, huge wedge tornado. But certainly uh, this is uh, exactly, as you say, exactly the kind of supercell thunderstorm, exactly the kind of tornado environment for, uh, for the formation of a tornado that Vortex 2 has been waiting to get. Now, if I look just off to the right of that section, it looks to be lowering, Dr. Forbes. I looked to, it looks to be we've got uh, some downdrafts here. We've got some large hail shafts or rain shafts. Is that also almost a classic setup for a supercell? It absolutely is. We, we talk about, the, and here's what Mike has been talking about, this dark shaft here, a sheet of rain or hail or a, a curtain of rain or hail coming down. Uh, then there's uh, off to the right probably some additional. So this is the area of where the rear flank downdraft right wraps in one of the hypotheses for vortex 2 is that that rain brings down with it some rain cooled air that has been aloft and has stronger rotation aloft when it gets down to the ground it gets recirculated into the updraft and much like a spinner spinning faster as you pull it inward uh, it takes that weaker rotation and makes it into a possible tornado and you can see it is certainly trying to do that uh, right in this area Dr. Forrest, when you look at the atmosphere that this particular storm is in, is it likely that this could be a long-lived supercell? How, I mean, what kind of atmosphere are we looking at here? Do we have the right shear? Do we have the right moisture for this thing to be long-lived? Uh, you certainly do. In fact, you have one additional factor. Uh, there's a, this uh, area has a cold front that's dropping down into the area. And so one thing that the previous Vortex project of 15 years ago found was that there's some enhancement of tornado potential when storms can run along boundaries. And so this one has a, a, a cold front dropping down uh, as a possible uh, a boundary that this storm could run east along. So it could indeed be a long-lived supercell, perhaps uh, producing one or more tornadoes or perhaps a long-lived tornado. Dr. Forbes, from where we stand, it looks like it's almost coming directly towards us or maybe slightly a slight turn south of us. If we were to be on just the northern side of this, what kind of danger would we be in in our particular location? Because now we're starting to see a lot more lightning on the northern side of this storm. I'm sorry, Mike, repeat. Uh, I, didn't he I didn't hear your question. I'm sorry, Dr. Forbes. This storm looks to be taking uh, a turn right towards us or maybe just slightly south of us. If it takes that slightly south turn and comes towards us, what danger will we be on the northern side of it? Because right now I'm starting to see more frequent cloud-to-ground lightning. Well, certainly cloud-to-ground lightning. Uh, there, uh, there appears to be a tremendous amount of uh, precipitation immediately behind this wall cloud. So likely to be some hail coming across there. So you're likely to need to take a jog a couple of miles to the south. A uh, beautiful structure here in the storm cloud. We're seeing uh, over in this area a flanking line uh, that is forming of, of clouds that are not nearly as tall, but then the main inflow coming into the storm in the wall cloud area, then leaning upward and to the right. Off uh, in this area, you see the main body of rain from the thunderstorm. Uh, you see this little secondary area of rain and hail that's just to the rear of the wall cloud, and that's down near the hook echo of this uh, spiraling supercell thunderstorm. So this, again, continues to be the area uh, to monitor for the possible development of tornadoes. Uh, and uh, uh, these areas are where rain-cooled air is being generated. And then some of that is revolving around behind that wall cloud and then coming forward. That area that you had been watching earlier with the, the little tail coming down and upward, that's kind of where that rear flank downdraft was, was spiraling along and it was pushing up some of the air uh, in, in, the, in the process. Dr. Forbes, it looks like, and we're going to grab the camera here real quick and go handheld. Now, it looks like it keeps funnels dropping down and dropping down, but nothing seems to want to sustain itself. Is this a process that happens with supercells, that it can go through that off and on funnel until it finally decides it wants to, in its mature stage, develop a tornado? Yes, and in this case, uh, I think what is perhaps happening is maybe the rear flank downdraft is a little cool. It's getting some heavy rain a little bit too close here to the wall cloud. And uh, one of the hypotheses from Vortex 1 uh, was that uh, uh, rain cooled, too cold a downdraft is, makes it harder to get tornadoes because that colder air is dense and heavy. It's harder to pick it back up real quickly. Uh, but as you see, say, we keep trying to get tornadoes. We get a little a cone shaped, wedge shaped funnels hanging down. It's definitely doing it more now than we've seen before, uh, trying to produce tornadoes. Yeah, there you go, down. Dr. Forbes. That one looks more impressive than anyone we've seen so far. Yeah, that, this that, is that funnel the most is coming down. Yet. Hard to tell if that's actually reaching the ground or not. 
Yeah, with, with especially with the rain curtains behind it there, it's hard to tell what you would be looking for would be down near the ground, a little debris cloud kicking up. But uh, with the with the rain in behind there, it's hard to get a, 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 a clear.